What's up guys? Today we're going to be checking out a pair of the highly requested Rhythmic F18 subwoofers. Now this video would not have been possible without the support of our Patreon patrons. Through many months I was able to save up and purchase these subwoofers as Rhythmic does not like to send out loaners. So thank you patrons, this video would not have been possible without you guys. Now what makes these subwoofers so special is the direct servo technology. Per Rhythmic's website, it works by having a sensing coil in blue, adjacent to the driver voice coil in red, is used to generate a feedback signal which is then used to correct any difference between the original and the reproduction. The sensing coil acts as a microphone and the feedback is sent to the servo board where the necessary corrections are made instantly. This is supposed to give you tight articulate bass with low distortion. There's a bunch more on their website, so if you want additional info, you can find it there. Inside the box is the installation guide, a two-prong power cable, and four rubber feet. Before you flip this guy right side up, you're going to want to install the feet because you don't want to scratch the vinyl finish. It is vinyl because you can see the seam right here on the bottom. As the model number would imply, this has an 18 inch driver made out of aluminum. And yeah, it's stiff. Around back is the 900 watt Hypex Class D amplifier. Got your XLR ends, got your normal face switch, limiter on, off, auto power on, auto, off, RCA ends, got a PEQ switch for on or off. There's a 12 volt trigger, got your gain, bandwidth, frequency adjustments, got your non LFE delay phase from zero to 180 degrees, variable, crossover variable from 25 to 120 hertz, volume knob, minimum, max. These knobs also have a really nice feel too, it's got a nice tension to it. Then we've got your subwoofer low pass filter switch, got 50, AVR, 80. 24, rumble filter on or off, frequency extension, 12, 18, 14, damping is low, high, and mid, power input, and then your switch. Now these are all manual adjustments, so there's no kind of app support. For a vinyl wrap, it feels nice, and the enclosure is pretty solid. Size-wise, it measures 20 and a half inches wide by 20 and a half inches high by 21 inches deep, almost a perfect square, and it weighs 115 pounds. Frequency response is 10 to 250 hertz plus minus 3 dB using the LFE inputs. All right, let's get this installed in the theater, and I'll give you some thoughts and impressions. For setup, I'll be hooking up the subwoofers to a Trenov Altitude processor, and I'll be using a Kaleidoscape, an Apple TV, and a Zapiti for demos. I'm going to put these guys in the front corners of my room and use only what's available on the subwoofers to integrate them into my system, so I'll be turning off any room correction in the altitude. Since there's different options on the back of the subwoofers for install, the configuration that worked best for me that I personally liked the most with the most extension was to choose 12 Hz with low damping, turning the limiter off, adjusting the phase, and setting the crossover to AVR. Just real quick, if you're new to the channel and you're in the home theater, then consider becoming a subscriber for new weekly videos. From everything I've been told, these are supposed to be bass monsters and be tight and articulate at the same time. I can't think of a better demo than my go-to for sheer impact, which is Fury. Now I've heard this demo too many times with too many subwoofers, so let's see if these guys can bang. All tanks, start squirting that tree line. Let's light them up. Let's go. Let's clean it up. Okay, yeah, these are some tactile subs, no doubt. Do they have that same snappy punchiness as, say, a 12-inch REL or a 13-inch SB3000? No, not to my ears, they don't. Whenever the tanks would fire or the machine guns would start shooting, the smaller subs felt more like a quick jab to the face and then followed by a hefty dose of low end. 
The F-18s were more, let's load up and get you with a knockout punch right from the start. So I felt the initial attack with the smaller subwoofers were more immediate and more abrupt. That's not to say an 18-inch subwoofer can't be as responsive, because I do feel the Eskendo SMS-18 was nearly as quick as the smaller subs mentioned. And that was a ported sub. Back to the F-18, it's still quick, just not as light and nimble as the smaller subs. It's fast and punchy, but in a thicker, heavier-handed kind of way. And as many times as I've heard this demo, I've never felt it quite like this before. Since the F-18s have this heavy presence, I think Blade Runner 2049 would be the next logical demo. The eyeball scene has a hefty response around the 30 to 35 hertz range, and I feel these subwoofers are going to destroy that. Yeah, this is some neighbor massaging bass right there. It just holds that peak and it's steady and clean and just rolls right off at the end smoothly without any kind of lumpiness or boominess. From the slow buildup to the peak and back down, it's the best I've heard this demo yet. I think if you want gobs of bass that extends below 20 hertz, you're gonna have to watch Monster Hunter in Dolby Atmos. The Diablos attack at the beginning has some of the most aggressive bass I've heard this year. On our six. Now, if your subs are capable, you should be feeling the air vibrate around you before Diablos jumps out of the sand. It's one of those Jurassic Park, you can feel the footsteps coming first kind of thing. In my space, it goes from heavy and pressurized to room shaking, then body assaulting bass. It does this all again in a clean and smooth way. Now we gotta wrap this up with Edge of Tomorrow. If it was this impressive with Monster Hunter, I'm positive it's gonna sound good with this. This is that skin tingling kind of bass right here. I've not heard a subwoofer do this intro justice like the dual F-18s. Where the other subs have stopped trying to get to 10 hertz and below, the F-18s kept going. I did take some measurements at my main seating position, and as you can see, it peaks at 8 hertz, and I've got usable output below that. 102 dB at 8 hertz in my room is really impressive. Keep in mind that this is the response I'm getting from my space, so it's likely going to be different for yours. At the time of this video, a single F-18 is selling for $1,670 shipped. I believe if you buy two at the same time, you'd get a discount. If you buy them separately, a week apart like I did, you're going to be out of luck. One thing to note before you order, if you look under features and options, it says choice of finishes, black oak or black matte paint. If you scroll down, it also says our range of attractive and excellent value vinyl finishes, including black oak, black matte. Now, when you go to order, you have either gloss, which is a bit more, black oak, and matte black. It doesn't specify if it's black matte paint or black matte vinyl. I was hoping it'd be paint because I feel the vinyl makes it feel like a cheap sub. So if they're watching this, they should make it more clear what exactly it is you're gonna get. All that aside, I think it's a decent enough looking subwoofer. Although I feel $1,700 for vinyl is a tough call, but I could be picking nits here. Performance wise, it's a straight monster of a sub. I chose the 18s because I wanted something that would reach down low and went with sealed because I figured it'd be punchier than going ported. As I mentioned earlier, I didn't find it as accurate or as tight as some of the other subs I had in for review. So for my personal tastes, I wouldn't recommend this for a music only setup. Again, that's just my opinion and we all know that sound is subjective. Now for strictly home theater, this is by far the best subwoofer I've had in yet. It hits ridiculously hard and fills my theater with bass so low I didn't even realize was in the mix. And these are demos that I've heard over and over. 
The bass is so heavy and powerful, it truly is an onslaught on the eardrums and on your body and it throws out this quality of bass in a relatively small enclosure. As a value proposition, if you want bass that could very well get you into the single digit territory, which is room dependent, I don't know of another sub in this price category that's gonna reach this low and do so in a clean manner. It could be their servo technology that's helping it out, but dollar for dollar, this is the best sounding sub I've heard and it outperforms other subs costing many times more. I just wish it was painted. So those are my thoughts on the Rhythmic F18 subwoofer. Are you guys in the market for a sub? And if so, is Rhythmic on your list? Leave a comment and let us know. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys again in the next video.